Hi everyone. Let's take a look at the following limit example. Find the limit of x squared plus x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 4 as x is approaching to 2. Step number 1. If you plug in x to be 2, and I'll put this in quotation marks, this will give you 2 squared plus 2 minus 6 divided by 2 squared minus 4. And basically, this is going to be one of the seven types of indeterminates. So this equals to zero divided by zero. And that's okay, by the way. So you move forward to step number two. And step number two typically is what I call factoring. And depending on the function, there are different techniques. So in this case, when you look at the denominator, x squared minus four, you can go straight to the difference of squares, which is basically x minus two times x plus two. If you look at the numerator, x squared plus x minus 6, this is what we call simple factoring, something that you've done in grade 10 math. So for example, you can think of this as x minus 2 times x plus 3. Now, how do we know when factoring works? The fact that we can cross out x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, this signals to you, you're one step away from getting full marks. Now, if you keep going, you go back to step 1, you're going to plug in x to be 2, which basically means, let's try this again, which basically means the final answer is going to be 5 divided by 4. Now again, this is the answer, but how do we really know this is the correct answer? So what I would say is you spend one extra minute and you graph this. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect graph. Maybe I should say sketch this graph. And again, you can start with the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. So for example, when you think about y equal to x squared plus x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 4, the first step is to identify the horizontal asymptote, which is basically located at y equal to 1. And again, if you look at the horizontal asymptote, it looks like there are two of them at plus and minus 2. But we know that is not true. The only vertical asymptote for this graph is going to be x equal to negative 2. And when you hover over uh, x approaching to 2, there's going to be a cavity. And the cavity is going to be located exactly at the point that we found. So again, if I draw a graph, let's label kind of the other points. Again, it's only a sketch, so I'm not going to label exactly the location of the x, y intercepts. That is not the major focus. The major focus is to be aware that there is a cavity or a hole located at 2 and 5 over 4. And again, when you find the left limit and the right limit as x is approaching to 2, you would discover the corresponding y value is going to be 5 divided by 4, which was exactly the answer we found from page number 1. I hope this makes sense.